everyone, how's it going? It's Ricky here from Ricky's Macintosh here with an iPhone 4S conversion kit tutorial. Now what I'm going to do in this video is give you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to color convert your iPhone 4S. I want to say thank you to iPhone 4 Parts for sending this kit out. And if you want to check out their website, go to www.iphone4parts.com and see all the different color options they have available for you. Before we get started though, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the materials we're going to need in order to separate our iPhone 4S and put it back together. The first one you're going to need is a SIM ejector tool or a handy dandy trusty paper clip. That'll work just fine for removing the SIM tray. Next up you're going to need a plastic spudger and this is going to be for some cable removal and also for separating the LCD digitizer from the chassis itself. You're going to need a double zero Phillips screwdriver, a Penelope screwdriver, and also a flathead screwdriver. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. The first step is turning off the iPhone. Of course, when you open up your iPhone, you don't want any power running through it, so just make sure you turn off your phone. The next step is grabbing that handy dandy paper clip, and let's go ahead and take out this SIM tray. The reason for doing this is that if you don't, you will not be able to remove the logic board in order to replace the screen. After you've done that, grab your Penelope screwdriver and make sure it is the Penelope screwdriver and remove the two bottom screws on the iPhone 4S. And once you've done that, go ahead and set them aside and make sure you keep track. After you've done that, just take your thumbs and push up on the back. The back will pop off and reveal the innards of the iPhone 4S. Now take a deep breath because we are about to take apart your iPhone 4S, which can be very intimidating, but don't worry, you can do it. Grab your double zero Phillips screwdriver and take out the two screws that are holding the battery connector in place. You'll notice that these screws are not very tight and they are very small. So make sure you keep track of where these screws are. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and take your plastic spudger and remove the connector from the logic board. If a little gold tab flies out at you, don't worry, you didn't break your iPhone. We'll go ahead and put that back when we reassemble the battery. Just go ahead and lift up on the connector, make sure it's separated from the logic board, and now it's time to remove the battery. Don't use the tab, go ahead and go from the other side, use your spudger and just lift up. The battery is adhesed to the chassis, so it will take some work, but the battery should come out fairly easily. Once the battery is removed, let's go ahead and take out the antenna diode. Now this is a very small portion of the iPhone 4S and it is wrapped around a hook. So when you're unhooking this, make sure you are very careful because if anything happens to this, you will not have an antenna signal. Now it's time to take off the first shield. This is very easy to do. You have to remove these two screws. The one on the left is the longer screw, so make sure you keep these screws in order. As if you put the longer screw on the right side, you could damage your iPhone 4S. Once the screws have been removed, it is very easy to remove the shield. You just have to give it a little tug as it is adhesed and it'll come right off. Now it's time to remove the ribbon cable from the logic board. This is very easy to do. Grab your spudger and pull on one of the corners. The cable will lift up. It is adhesed to the logic board. So when you bend it back, make sure you do so very, very slowly and carefully as this cable is prone to tear. And if it does tear, you will ruin your iPhone 4S. Now it's time to remove the speaker on the bottom. This is very easy to do. There's only two screws holding it in, one on the right side and then one on the left side underneath the ribbon cable we just lifted up. At this time, I wanna to talk to you guys about screw management, which sounds funny, but don't worry. I have a point here. You wanna make sure that you keep the speaker with its screws. You wanna make sure you keep the shield with its screws, the battery with its screws. Keep everything in order so that you know how to reassemble the iPhone 4S. It just saves a lot of time. Now there's this little triangle here that was on the left screw. Put that aside as we will put that triangle back in when we put the speakers back in. The speaker should be free now, so all you have to do is pull up and the speaker will release. Very cool. Now it's time to take off the EMI shield, and this is one of the most brutal parts of the iPhone 4S disassembly. All these screws are different lengths, so you need to make sure you set up these screws in a way that you can remember which one goes where. There are four screws. So make sure you take your time. They are very small, they are very prone to drop, and uh, they can be very stressful. So just go slow, take your time, 
and let's remove this EMI shield. We'll continue working in the top portion of the iPhone 4S. Take your screwdriver and remove that screw right there. After you've done that, you want to grab your plastic spudger because you want to remove the plate that the screw was holding down. In order to do this, come from the right side and lift the plate up at a 45 degree angle. This should release the conductors that are underneath the screen itself. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and pull out the tab itself. And now you want to remove the second and final antenna diode. This is your Wi-Fi connection, so make sure you are very careful when you are peeling this off of the logic board. Just take your time and go very slowly because this is an important piece. Now it's time to remove the EMI shield, which is no easy task. On the bottom right hand side of the EMI shield, there is a hook that goes underneath the logic board. And by that hook, there is a mini ribbon cable, which is very easy to tear. So what you want to do is start from the top and pull down towards you and then lift up and the EMI shield should release and come off the logic board. Now take your flathead screwdriver and remove that double tap screw that you see right there. And once you've done that, it's finally time to start prying up cables. What you want to do is take your spudger and lift up this cable you see right here. The reason for doing that one first is because that second one you see there is hidden underneath, so you're going to need to remove that left one first. After you've done that, you can go ahead and remove the cable that is connected to the camera, and the whole camera unit will come out itself. And next up, we have three more you need to remove. There's that one there. There's a long one right here, and underneath that long one, there is a really short connector. So make sure you get that one, otherwise it will be very tough to remove your logic board. There are only four screws left you need to remove in order to remove the logic board. You want to move that one on the top left there. And if that gold piece falls off, again, don't worry. We'll replace that when we reassemble the iPhone. You want to remove another double tap screw using your flathead. This is right next to the antenna diode, so make sure you are very careful. Take your time. There is another screw by the A5 chip here. This one is very easy. And finally, there's one right next to the vibrating motor. Make sure you get this one out. And now the logic board should be free. Now it's time to remove the logic board. When you're doing this, make sure all the cables are out of the way. You don't want to rip anything. You don't want to damage anything. Watch out for the antenna diode on the top there. Watch out for the LCD cables. And just take your time and go slow. There's no hurry here. Just pull all the cables out of the way and the logic board will come out very nicely. After that, it's time to remove the vibrating motor, which has a lot of adhesive to it. So you're going to have to use some force, but it will come out. Don't worry about that. Now it's time to remove 10 screws, and then you'll see the magic behind the display. There's three screws on each side of the iPhone 4S, and all of these have washers on them. And then there's four screws left, one in each of the corners of the iPhone 4S. These are small screws, so make sure you don't strip these screws because it can make screen removal very difficult. Now take your plastic spudger and go in between the digitizer itself and the chassis and just go around the iPhone 4S very slowly and just slowly try and pry it off of the chassis. Now it can be very frustrating, but don't worry. Eventually the screen will pop loose and you will be home free. Now that it's time to go ahead and pull the screen off of the chassis, make sure that those two flex cables are straight. Make sure that they slide through the hole just fine. And again, take your time because you do not want to rip these cables because you will damage your display. So there we have it. The display has been removed. And now it's time to show you the second part of the color conversion video. And that would be putting a new color on. Again, I'm just using my red color. But let's go ahead and get started with that portion of the video. When putting the display back onto the chassis, you want to make sure that the two flex cables are straight. If they happen to be bent, the iPhone screen will not lay flat. And number two, the screen could be damaged if you bend the cables too much. So make sure that you don't pull on the cables. Make sure that they just slide through the hole perfectly. And they should be the same length once the screen lays flat onto the phone itself. Now it's time to go ahead and replace the six screws on the sides with the washers and also the four screws in the corner. This will make sure that the screen is fastened to the chassis. Once you're done with that, you are now ready to start reassembling the iPhone 4S. We can go ahead and put the speaker back in at this time. And what you want to do is just make sure that the little metal tabs on the top of the speaker lie underneath. Just make sure you push each individual tab in and then push down on the speaker itself. In doing this, it'll lay flat, it'll lay smooth, 
and everything will work. The connection will line up with the antenna diode and all the screws will line up perfectly. So again, just make sure you push the metal tabs in and then hold that down while you take your screws and put them back in to the iPhone 4S speaker. Now it's time to put back that little tiny triangle we found earlier in the video. This is very tough to do if you have big hands like I do, so a pair of tweezers might actually help. But once you get it lined up, all you have to do is put the screw in through the black triangle and you are good to go. Now it's time to put the vibrate motor back in. All you have to do is line up the two screw holes, the one on the vibrate motor and then the one on the chassis. Everything should be straight and parallel. And now you can start putting back in the logic board. Now I stress to you guys, make sure you take your time with this portion because you want the logic board to lay flat. You don't want any cables to be damaged. So just make sure you go really slow, make sure all the cables are out of the way and you will be just fine. Now take your flathead screwdriver and put back those two double tap screws. And when you do this, make sure you are very careful because they are next to some very sensitive parts of the iPhone, mainly those antenna diodes you don't want to damage. And then grab your double zero Phillips screwdriver and put back the screw by the vibrate motor and also the one by the A5 chip. Once you've done that, it is now safe to go ahead and lay the ribbon cable flat. Again, this was adhesed to the board, so make sure it lays flat and that it does retain its adhesion. And then just push down on the connector itself and wait till you hear the click. That way you know it is connected securely. Now you can go ahead and put back the shield we took off. Again, remember that the left screw is longer than the right screw, so make sure those screws go back in the right order. Let's go ahead and replace that gold piece that flew off when we were taking the screw out earlier and take your double zero Phillips screwdriver and put the screw back in place. And now it's time to go ahead and put the camera connection back in. Just make sure the camera sits flush with the device itself and then go ahead and push down on the connector. And then now it's time to also plug in all the cables for your LCD display and all that good stuff. So again, the one on the right goes down first and then the one on the left because the left one goes on top of the one on the right. You can now replace the EMI shield, make sure the hook goes in, in the right spot, and also put back the screws for the EMI shield. Now again, these screws are different lengths, so make sure you kept track of what screws go where because you do not want to pierce a hole through your display. Now if you remember that plate that we pulled out at a 45 degree angle, make sure you put that back in and the screw on top of that while also connecting the antenna diode. Reaching ever closer, it's time to put the battery back in. I usually like to put the right side in first and then let it lay flat on the left. Before putting the connector back on though, make sure you put that gold piece that flew out. Once you do that, then you put the connector down and then you can put the screws back into place. We are very, very close to seeing the final presentation of the iPhone 4S color conversion kit. Now it's time to go ahead and put the back glass on the iPhone 4S. You want to put it above the bottom portion and then slide it down just a little bit. Once you've done that, you can grab your Penelope screwdriver and put the two bottom screws in the bottom of the iPhone. Once you've done that, grab your SIM card tray. Go ahead and plug that back into place. Just make sure it snaps in nicely. And now we have the completed iPhone 4S color conversion kit. Before you do anything else though, make sure you power it on, make sure everything works. You wanna check the proximity sensor, make sure the camera works, make sure you still have a signal with your carrier and make sure the Wi-Fi signal works. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Again, I wanna say thank you to iPhone 4 parts. I really appreciate them trusting me to do this video. I am really excited that you guys were able to watch this video. Click on the annotation there to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you guys so much for watching again. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.